So for the third and final part of this lesson, what we want to do is after we're done with our slideshow, so let's, let's go here. Um, once we're done with our uh, this section of our presentation, I should say, when it comes out, we talk about it. And then let's say you're done with it, so you want it to go back. So I can click, and I want it to go back. So to do that, first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the image we want to animate. And I'm going to go up here to Add Effect, and I'm going to click Motion Path. I'm going to select the same one, diagonal down and to the right. When I select that, don't worry about the preview for now, when I select that, you'll see another path show up here, another diagonal path. And uh, though you'll see it go back to that long one that we had when we first selected it. So what I want to do is have it match up with the first path, otherwise you'll see it jump from one part of the screen to another, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the number five, which is our fifth animation, and our fifth step in the animation, and I'm going to go here and drag the path up so that it matches up with the first path we had created earlier. Now what that's going to do is we have the same path, but the problem is it's still going down and to the right. And what we want it to do is do the reverse of that, the opposite of that, and have it go back. To do that, all you need to do is right click on the path, not on the picture, but the path, and I accidentally moved it. Let's try that again. Right click on the path and go to reverse path direction. And what that does is it's going to have it go back. So if I play my show, one, two, three, it's going to grow and come down, and then it's going to go right back. Obviously, the next step is to have it also shrink back down. So to do that, I'm going to go down here to, or I should say up here, to uh, add an animation. Now right now it says change because I'm still on number five here. So I'm going to select the picture, add effect, and I'm going to go to emphasize and click on grow shrink. Now right now it's making it grow again. So we don't want to grow, make it grow. We actually want it to shrink. So to do that, you go over here to the, uh, the uh, animation here, the last one that we just did. And we're going to go down to effect options. Now here it says 150% and we're going to actually shrink that down. You may have to do a little bit of guess and check. I think mine has a little bit of an issue and I, I can't remember what percentage we used earlier. But I'm going to type in I think 65 and see if that's the right size. I type the, in, the, in the custom area I, I change the percentage, push enter just like before and we're going to say OK. So ignore that, but we're going to play it and see if that works. So one, two, three, it's going to grow and come down. It's going to go back and shrink. And you can see that ah, just about right, actually. Uh, I think I just need to increase the number. So I'm going to go back down to effect options. And I think a number like 67 will be just right. Push enter and say OK. So uh, I'll trust that that's right. And again, ignore that little preview there. That's not what we care about. The final thing on that section is that I want it to shrink and move up at the same time. So just like before, you click on the image, go to timing, and over here, instead of on click, you're going to have it start with previous. Now I just made a mistake because I actually want it to uh, happen over here on this uh, last step here. So I'm going to go down here change the timing and instead of on click it's going to be with previous. We click OK and uh, from there again ignore that preview. From there I also want these to become completely opaque so they look clear and, uh, and crisp. So I'm going to highlight those two. I'm going to go to add effect. I'm going to go to emphasize and transparency. Now remember earlier we had the transparency set to 50%. This time, I'm going to go here for the added animations we just did, go to Effect Options, and over here under Amount, I'm going to change that to zero. Now, there isn't a zero to select, so I'm going to go to Custom and type zero and push Enter, and I'll say OK. Now, it should have done that to the bottom one. Well, let's just double check to make sure it did it to both. So, Effect Options, and ah, it didn't. So, good thing we checked. Change the amount to zero for both of the images, so both Koala and Penguin now. Finally, I want it to become opaque 
uh, along with when I click for the jellyfish to go back to its spot. So I'm going to click here, go to timing, um, and I'm going to change it from on click to with previous and say OK. Now, one thing to note is you'll see that I can change this on click to with previous here. So if you have that shortcut there, you can change the timing here too. But in case it's not here, you would go to timing to access all the detailed uh, details for that. So now let's try the show. I click once, jellyfish comes in, koala comes in, and now my penguins come in. So on my fourth click, jellyfish becomes prominent and comes out. These two faded, uh, faded out a little bit. I click again, they fade back in. We missed the, the uh, penguins there, we'll fix that in a second. And then this goes back to its stop, this, its part, or its, its, um, its uh, location. So let's fix the penguin here. I'm going to click on the penguin, and uh, it looks like this step, if I go to Effect Options, um, it says 50%, so we need to change that to zero. I think I just forgot to push Enter. So there we go. And that's the show. That's how you do it. So what I want you guys to do for your, for your homework assignment is to recreate that for your second and third picture, so that when you click, these two fade out, and the koala comes down, and then for the last one, you know, when the koala goes back, the penguin comes down, and that becomes prominent while the other two fade out here. So that's your assignment. We'll work on that more tomorrow. If you have any questions, as always, you can email me, and I'll work with you from there. Good luck.